Hi, this is Mrs. Migdo, and today we're going to talk about internal organizational patterns. We've been studying nonfiction, and we're reading a lot of difficult texts. And understanding what the author is trying to say is very important. So think about the words, internal organizational patterns. This is the way the writing is organized. Now, I know that many of you have talked about text structures in elementary school. You've talked about headings and titles and pictures and bolded words and columns. And when you look at a page, those are the way the page is organized. We call those external because you see that organization before you even start reading. Now, internal organization or internal text structures. Those both mean the same thing, and you'll see both of those names. That means once you're inside that text, you're reading the words. How has the author chosen his or her words and ideas to create a pattern in the text? And authors create a pattern to help you understand what they're saying and to be able to, your brain to process what they're gonna say next. So if you can identify the text structure, it's really gonna help you understand the text more. So today we're gonna to look at seven internal text structures and we're going to give you some samples. Here are the note sheet that you're going to be taking your notes on. We've color coded these notes. There's some highlighted green that are helpful hints for you as you learn these text structures and also things highlighted in yellow that are additional information. Each time I come to a new topic, there are blanks that I want you to fill in for the type and the definition. I'll give you an example and I'll point out some keywords and a graphic organizer which should help you create a picture in your mind of how to organize one of these paragraphs. All right, here we go. Our first topic is compare contrast. In a compare contrast piece of text, the purpose of the passage is to show similarities and differences between two topics. Remember, if I go too fast, you're welcome to stop the video and go back. Examples might be comparing to two different topics, comparing two different sides of an issue. For example, comparing soccer to baseball. Some key words that you might see in a compare contrast paragraph or text are similar, difference, both, however, and alike. And a visual way to think about organizing the text is a Venn diagram where you have the differences on both sides and the comparison in the middle. Here's an example for you. Two popular menu items are Cobb salad and taco salad. Both start with a base of lettuce and each includes meat, protein, but they have very different toppings. Cobb salad has bacon, shredded cheese, tomatoes, hard boiled eggs, chicken, and avocado. On the other hand, a taco salad has ground beef, tomatoes, chili beans, cheese, onion, and crushed tortilla chips. The dressings are varied for both of the salads. Both are hearty enough to be a meal. Notice the bold words. Those are those key words. They help organize the ideas. Can you see how you could put these ideas into a Venn diagram? This is a compare contrast. Our second type of internal organizational pattern is called process. And this is showing kind of how to do something or an action and it's done in steps. So our definition is the purpose of the passage is to explain the steps of how something occurs from beginning to end. For example, how to do or make something. Some examples down there, some specific examples are recipes, directions, computer operations, and experiments. Keywords are really important in a process text. 
you will almost always see the words first, second, next, then, finally, and after. And your organization is sort of like a list of the visual graphic organizer, but think of it like steps, okay? That is first, then, next, finally. Not like a plain old list, but steps. It has a specific order. It's easy to make a salad. First, chop up lettuce and put it in the bowl. Then, cut up and add the fresh veggies you like, tomatoes, onions, cucumbers, and carrots. Next, select the dressing you want to add and pour it over the top. Finally, add some croutons for a nice crunchy finish. Now, you have a delicious meal or snack. There are those keywords in uh, those are those keywords bolded. Our third internal organizational structure is called chronological or sequential. There are two fairly important roots here. Chrono meaning time and sequa meaning order. So this is order, time order. The definition the purpose of the passage is to show time order in which events have occurred. Notice the helpful hint at the bottom, fiction. Fiction stories are always written in chronological order, or mostly. It goes from the beginning to the end, and during the story, time passes. Look at the examples in the middle. Describe events from past, from the past in order. Example, historical events. All narratives and events that will happen in the future. Many history passages are written in chronological order, like in a history book, because that's chronological order. So some key words might be dates and time. It might be first and second. It might be after and before or next. But a really big one is dates and time words. You have to sense time passing. Some graphic organizers would be different types of timelines, okay? This is all about the passing of time in order. So chronological sequential example. Food historians tell us salads, generally defined as a mix of greens with dressing, were enjoyed by ancient Romans and Greeks. As time progressed, salads became more complicated. Recipes varied according to place and time. Dinner salads, as we know them today, were popular with Renaissance folks. Composed salads assembled with layers of ingredients were enjoyed by the 18th century. Today, they are called chef's salads. In this passage, you see time, you see different ages. We see ancient Romans and Greeks. We see time progressing. We see the Renaissance time period. We see the 18th century time period, and we see today. You should imagine how that can be put onto a timeline. Also remember, all stories, narratives, are told in this type of order as well. So both fiction and nonfiction can be told in chronological and sequential. Our next internal organizational pattern is enumeration or listing. Take a look at these highlighted pieces. These are roots that we've highlighted. Numer, do you see the word number in there? And list. You're going to be describing or listing ideas about a topic. And we say concrete topic. That's going to become important later because it's describing something you can touch or see or feel. Okay? Take a look at the definition. The purpose of the passage is to explain or list specific points or examples about a topic. Take a look at your examples in the middle. Main idea and details. So just that regular old Topic with details to support it is usually enumeration and listing. It could be a list of facts about a concrete topic, but it could also be a packing list or a shopping list or a bulleted list. And take a look at our graphic organizers here. 
we've got a list of things. We will have salad tonight. Be sure you pick up dressing, croutons, lettuce, cucumbers, tomatoes, and carrots from the store, please. This is a very simple enumeration and listing. You clearly see that list. Okay, we're going to take a break now and we want you to go and do some practice with these first four internal text structures and then we'll come back and do the last three.